Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. A couple of announcements, and I'll start with free stuff. You all love free stuff. We love offering it. So here goes. Uh, April 17th, it's a Monday, we have a dinner uh, here at our office. We've been doing this since um, 1996, having a monthly dinner, which used to be in my dining room. Thankfully, now it's here at the office. Um, Six o'clock, we serve a delicious meal. I deliver a lecture. We take questions. And of course, if you're in Central Ohio, come join us. And if you're not, I can't feed you virtually, but you can watch the lecture and ask questions. Uh, later that night, April 17th, I'm presenting a sample class for healthcare professionals. Um, things I think you need to know in practice, the types of things you might learn more about here. Uh, also free 9 p.m. that same night. So you could spend theoretically all of Monday evening with me if you wanted to. Um, we are also instituting a new thing we're going to offer once a month, which is an orientation session, like a tour of our libraries and videos and all that sort of thing for people who are not members of Wellness Forum. And you think, well, I might want to join. I don't know, but I want to know more about it before I do. So tour of our websites and, and libraries, and then I will engage in a short Q&A so you can see what those types of sessions are like. Um, only one time per person. And if you, um, so anyway, it's April uh, 19th, it's a Wednesday at um, 9 p.m. And then on the 26th, I'm doing a workshop at 9 p.m. Eastern on building a tribe. This is a time for community, for people to be close to one another, um, to have support for one another, um, lots to say about that. But anyway, 9 p.m. on the 26th. And um, then uh, don't forget about our great food products, which I'll show you here. Smoothie mix. I, I don't like the smoothie mixes in the store. It's why we make one here with all the fortification and stuff. This is just vegetable powders. Brewer's yeast, which adds, um, uh, which adds uh, trace minerals to the smoothie. Our own green tea and black seeds, which are golden organic black seeds. This green tea comes from our farm in China. So don't forget our food products. This is how I start my day every day, our smoothie with bananas and frozen fruit, and then uh, two pieces of really good whole grain toast with fat-free hummus. It's my breakfast every day. And um, I'm 66 years old and I work, I, I work people a third of my age and um, plenty of energy, feel great, sleep like a baby when I do get to sleep, et cetera. All right, so let's get on to uh, today's topic. Oh, one other thing I wanna mention, we're starting to get geared up for um, uh, summer semester and we offer a, a fabulous course three times a year, the Diet Lifestyle Intervention Course. I cannot believe I almost forgot to mention this. It's a 15 module series that covers um, the science of health and nutrition, uh, women's health, men's health, children's health, gastrointestinal health, um, vaccines, um, uh, autoimmune diseases, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, uh, cognitive health, uh, so musculoskeletal disorders. It's a fabulous overview course. It's not real expensive. It's a great way to try out um, our professional development courses. All right, so now I think I covered everything. Let's get to the business of the day, which is um, a new cholesterol lowering drug, which I think is pretty useless. I'm gonna explain why. So pembidoic acid is one of a new class of non-statin drugs for lowering LDL cholesterol that targets the cholesterol biosynthesis pathway in the liver. The FDA approved it as a treatment for people who are statin intolerant or who have reached the maximum tolerable statin dose uh, for treatment of high cholesterol. It's made by Asperian and the drug is available in two forms. Nexlitol, we're gonna talk mostly about today, is comprised of only bempedoic acid and Neslazet is a combination product that includes bempedoic acid and also Zetia, an already approved uh, cholesterol lowering drug. Asperian's website reports that, quote, once daily therapy was shown in a clinical trial to deliver 38% reduction in LDL cholesterol compared to placebo. Now, keep in mind that this is a change in a surrogate marker, which may or may not have any relationship to improved health, which I discussed in a video last week. According to an article recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine, a randomized controlled trial that included 13,970 patients showed that treatment with bempedoic acid was associated with a lower risk of major cardiovascular events, and that included deaths from cardiovascular causes, non-fatal myocardial infarction, non-fatal stroke, coronary revascularization. 
And the study reported the relative risk reduction for heart attacks in patients taking Nexlitol was almost 23%. So you could conclude from this rather rosy overview that the drug is a reasonable alternative to statins and might even be more effective, a good thing, because the um, statin drugs, when used for primary prevention, reduce the risk of events by less than 2%. So something more effective would definitely be welcome. But further analysis, looking at risk reduction uh, in myocardial infarction in absolute terms shows a totally different picture. So the Nexlitol group, there were 261 events in 6,992 patients. That's a 3.7% risk. Placebo, 334 events and 6,978 patients, a 4.8% risk. So your absolute risk reduction is 1.1%. So the absolute risk reduction is clinically insignificant, and let's put it in even more plain English, it's useless, the drug is useless. So now let's go back to the drug company's website for a second. Limitations of use for both Nexlitol and Nexlizet, this is what it says. The effect of Nexlitol and Nexlizet on cardiovascular morbidity and mortality has not yet been determined. Hmm. Safety information, even more concerning. Side effects of Nexlitol include hyperuricemia, tendon rupture, upper respiratory infections, muscle spasms, back pain, abdominal pain, uh, bronchitis, pain in the extremities, anemia, and elevated liver enzymes, which I have to point out are many of the same side effects that are caused by statin drugs and aren't these supposed to be the alternative to people who can't tolerate statins. Well, no one in their right mind would agree to take this drug as shown the actual risk reduction and side effects. Most people might at least consider adopting a low-fat plant-centered diet if shown the benefits and real terms of doing so. This lack of true informed consent is one of the reasons why Americans are so sick and why the erroneous perception of the lazy American who doesn't care about health and just wants to take a pill continues to persist. The pill is falsely represented to be safe and effective, and the diet and lifestyle choice isn't even offered. Reporting the benefit of drug supplements and medical interventions and in relatives uh, terms is very misleading, and relative risk reduction should not be the metric used in making treatment decisions. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. It was way too much to put into one video, so I thought I would apply this to this particular drug. I was asked about it. That's what got me looking into it. Somebody said their cardiologist recommended it. I thought, okay, I'll take a look and see what I can find, and this is what I found. Um, once again, I'll point out English translation, useless, all right? Change your diet. Much better approach, all right? So tomorrow I'll talk a little bit more about this relative versus absolute risk. We'll apply it to a topic I know you want to know a lot about. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you tomorrow with more news.